Hey, what's up my chemistry people? Who is ready for some more math? In this video, we're gonna talk about how we can determine thermodynamic favorability of a reaction, spontaneity of a reaction, based on Gibbs free energy, the equilibrium constant, or cell potential. Now we've already talked about relating Gibbs free energy to cell potential. This one just takes us one step further, includes that equilibrium constant, okay? So what are we gonna do? Explain how equilibrium constant, Gibbs free energy are related and perform calculations involving that relationship. Then we're gonna talk about how cell potential the equilibrium constant and Gibbs free energy related and do some more calculations involving those relationships. So more equations, more calculator, more fun. So you can also determine spontaneity or thermodynamic favorability of a redox reaction from equilibrium information. And I know that we already know all about the equilibrium constant K, but you can relate Gibbs free energy change, Josiah Willard Gibbs, and the equilibrium constant by the following equation. Boom. Delta G is equal to negative rat link, negative RT, natural log of K, where R is your universal gas constant, We'll be using the gas constant that has joules in it this time. That R is always tricky because there's so many different R values depending on your different units. Temperature in Kelvin and then your equilibrium constant K. All right, let's talk about math. If K is equal to one, that means there are significant amounts of both product and reactant present at equilibrium. But if you take the natural log of one, you get zero and anything times zero is zero. So if K is equal to one, delta G will be equal to zero. If, however, K is less than one, if your equilibrium constant is less than one, recall that that means there's a larger concentration of reactant than product present at equilibrium. This will make delta G positive. It indicates that the reaction as written is endergonic. Basically, again, not thermodynamically favored, not spontaneous. It's gonna require energy to occur. To me, this makes a lot of sense. So if you have a lot of reactant present at equilibrium, you haven't formed a lot of product. The reaction as written isn't very spontaneous. And as you think mathematically how that works out, when you take the natural log of a number less than one, you get a negative number. A negative times a negative is a positive. Boom, math. However, if K is greater than one, there is a larger concentration of product than reactant present at equilibrium. That means delta G will be negative. The reaction as written is exergonic. It releases energy. In other words, it's thermodynamically favorable or spontaneous. And as you think about this, when you take the natural log of a number greater than one, you get a positive value. Positive times a negative, according to math, is gonna give us a negative delta G value. It's important to note you can rearrange the equation to solve for the equilibrium constant. This is a common question that you'll find on the AP exam. Not so much on the multiple choice, but definitely on the free response. And if your math skills are lacking, be sure to commit that second equation to memory because the second one is not on the formula chart. Spend some time. So to sum up some of the math we've done over the past couple of videos, there's a great data table in your notes that I encourage you to spend some time looking at to help you understand mathematical relationships that we're gonna be working with in this unit. Boom, and we are done.